everybody, my name is Hannah Boardman. I'm a cognitive therapist and coach specializing in food issues, disordered eating and eating disorders. Now, welcome to the first of many Therapy Thursdays, a series of videos which I will be running every single week, taking you through various different tools, strategies, and therapeutic approaches to help you to make progress around food. So to kick off the series, what I'm going to be talking about today is a very effective but simple strategy to help deal with those really uncomfortable food urges and cravings. You know the ones that just feel so intense and it can seem like the only way to get rid of them is to give in to them. And I'm hearing this a lot at the moment, given the past year that we've had, a lot of people in lockdown, a lot of people in isolation, problems with food are at an all time high. And even many people who thought they have overcome these problems are now feeling like they're creeping back in. And this is absolutely normal because there is a lot going on in our lives. And food cravings and urges can basically stem from a variety of different sources. So obviously, when we're hungry. Yeah, we've got physical hunger that's going to send out some often very strong urges and cravings to want to eat. But on the flip side of that, there's also emotional urges and cravings. And this is what I'm really talking about. And especially given the last year that we've had, there's been a hell of a lot of anxiety, uncertainty, fear, loneliness, isolation, boredom, people not doing as much as they used to, not being able to exercise, etc. And this can stir up some pretty intense emotional cravings and urges. But there is a way of telling between the two. So when it comes to physical hunger, those urges and cravings you feel right deep in your belly, it's in your stomach. And these come on gradually and typically around three to four hours after you've eaten a meal, which makes sense. Your body's preparing for the next meal. And the way that you feel these urges is pretty slow. They're not that intense, but you can notice that they're there. And the urges or craving are for all types of foods. All types. There's kind of no one thing that you crave, you're just hungry. Now, emotional urges and cravings are very, very different. It's this physical trigger that leads to your mouth watering, feels like you need something, you can get all of this sensation in your chest, and it's urgent. There's this urgency towards it. It's like that voice in your head saying, you have got to eat something right now, or who knows what's gonna happen. It's like a life or death situation, which when you talk about it, seems ridiculous, but at the time, that's exactly how it feels. And like I said, it's automatic. Sometimes when people give in to these types of urges and cravings, afterwards they think to themselves, what the hell happened? <laughs> I have no idea, I was not in control of what I was doing. It's like a part of you just takes over. And it's usually you have cravings for specific types of foods, either carb-driven foods, sugar, whatever kind of your go-to thing is, there's normally something that's specific that you're on a hump for. So there are two different types. And I'm gonna talk about now a strategy that is very helpful for dealing with the emotional urges and cravings that you're feeling. And when I was going through my food issues, I definitely had more of the emotional urges. It was intense, it was overwhelming, I just had to eat. There was nothing nothing else that I could do. The feeling was so strong that I found myself just automatically going to the kitchen, going to the cupboards, eating the most random of things, normally carb-driven things for me, like bowls of cereal and porridge and pasta and rice. There's, most, there's no logical sense to it, which is why it must be coming from a different part of our brain, the emotional brain. There was no logical sense to what I was eating. And it became, over time, more and more apparent in my life until it became just a habit. And people would tell me, you have to learn to sit 
with those urges and sit with the uncomfortable emotions but I don't know about anybody else but when it is that intense <laughs> it feels like that is near enough impossible to do so after really struggling with that bit of advice I started practicing a different strategy which didn't involve me just having to sit with the feelings sometimes I could do that but when it's too strong that felt near enough impossible and this strategy is called the 3C strategy and it's made up of three steps funnily enough so I'm gonna all just walk you through each one first and foremost number one is to check in and this is probably the hardest bit is to kind of catch out the urge or craving before it turns into a behavior and all this simply means is pausing and you may even want to physically pause so for example if I was experiencing a really strong urge now to go to the kitchen before just going fine I'm gonna give in and get up is literally just to push my feet to the ground push my hands into the sofa and just pause and go what am I feeling right now what am I feeling right now in my body what am I feeling and for me my urges and cravings were always in my chest and my throat it was like this pressure this weight this intensity which I just had to get rid of so step number one is really important before you go off on autopilot just pause you have so much more control of your actions than you realize just give yourself that slight moment in time to pause and check in so step number two which is called create so once you've identified what the feeling is or the urge or the craving we want to start to build up some details around it because the more details we can get around this feeling the easier it's going to be to intervene and manipulate and I mean manipulate in a good way I'll show you in a minute so coming back to my example this feeling this urge this craving this need to just fill with food like I said, it was in my chest, in my throat. So you wanna to say to yourself, if there was a moment where in my body where I'm feeling this, where would it be? And then you would say, okay, if this feeling had a shape or if this urge had a shape, what shape would it be? Mine was always like a spiky ball. If it had a color, what color would it be? Black, for me, it was always black. Is there a weight to it? Like I said, squashing it was heavy I could barely swallow is it 2d is it 3d is it moving is it still can you see how many details I'm actually building up around this feeling this is really important because it reinforces that actually our emotions and these urges and cravings they're not in our heads they're actually bodily sensations just like sneezing or coughing they're found in the body so once you've spent some time connecting to the details, then we can move on to step number three, which is called collapse. Now, it is important to bring up the details so you can have that real good visual image of what that urge is. And sometimes you're best doing this with your eyes closed. So once you've connected to that feeling, that urge, you want to use the power of your breath and the breath is very important. So a really nice deep in breath. Try and focus on moving the belly rather than the chest too much. We all tend to shallow breathe in our chest, but if you kind of put one hand on your heart, one hand on your diaphragm, just under, under the breastbone, and focus on breathing into this bottom hand. So on the inhale, breathe in through the belly, and on the exhale, what you would imagine doing is just dropping through that urge to the level below it. And I kind of explained to my clients, it's like you're dropping through a cloud, all the way through. What's the feeling underneath that urge? Some people might say tension, stress, anxiety, fear. You know, okay. And we keep this going. So connected to that tension, for example, breathe in, breathe out, drop through the tension. What's the feeling underneath tension? If 
frustration. Breathe in, breathe out. What's the feeling underneath frustration? And you keep this going. You keep this going again and again, and it may feel like you're dropping, dropping, dropping. But eventually, and I say eventually, you will land at something positive. I'll give you a little secret. All emotions, all negative emotions will collapse into something positive. And the first time I did this, I think I had about 30 drop throughs. And I was thinking, am I ever gonna get there? But I just kept breathing, I trusted the process and kept with it until I got to peace or calm, for example. And then once you've got that feeling, you wanna do the same thing as create. Okay, if I could point to somewhere in my body where I'm feeling this calm, where would it be? In my shoulders. If it had a shape, what shape would it be? For me, it was like this soft blanket <laughs> draped across my shoulders. If it had a color, what color would it be? It was light blue. And so you wanna build up the pit, those details around this feeling and actually just connect to it and do whatever you can do to make it stronger. And what I mean by that, once you've got the details, what would happen to that positive feeling if you were to spread it? Spread it from your shoulders down into your chest, up into your throat. What if you were to make that light blue color even more blue, make the color brighter, make the shape or, or the feeling lighter? Play around with the details and it's surprising just how much control you have over what you're experiencing inside. And just spend a few minutes doing this and you'll be surprised. And then once you've finished the three C process, you just give yourself 10 minutes. Why do I say that? And 10 minutes is basically the trajectory of an emotional wave. And what I mean by that, all emotions and urges and cravings follow the path of a wave. They come in, they get stronger, they peak and they subside. And all of this takes about 10 minutes. So you can spend a few minutes, if you catch that urge or craving, just as it's peaking through the three C process, just give yourself some time afterwards and you'll be surprised to notice that usually it does pass. And in this time, you may want to go off and do something that's completely unrelated to food. Get out the kitchen, watch some TV, listen to something, go for a walk, just go upstairs, fold the washing, do the washing up, anything anything else and then check back in with yourself at the end and just notice how you feel and whether that urge or craving is passed and if it hasn't you can repeat just repeat the exercise again it may take a second go for you if it's really strong and this was the strategy that really helped me deal with those really intense, uncomfortable urges that just used to catch me off guard and the ones which I just could not sit with. Just could not sit with them. So give that a try. The 3C process, 3C strategy to dealing with those really intense, uncomfortable food cravings and urges. And if you actually enjoyed learning about this strategy please tune in next week I'll be hosting these videos every week for therapy Thursday and I'm also running my next overcome the binge eating cycle workshop on Monday the where are we Monday the 8th of March at 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time I will put a link to that workshop in the bottom of this video. So if you want to go and register to learn some more strategies about how to overcome thoughts, feelings, behaviors, especially related to binge eating, please, I'd love to see you there. So go ahead and register for that. And please like and subscribe my channel to get all the updates for Therapy Thursdays in the future. Take care guys.